Hi, my name is Martin Stricek. I'm head of infrastructure at Kiwi.com. Uh, Kiwi.com is a tech travel company. Uh, we are uh, making travel better. Uh, in my presentation, I will be talking about how we uh, went from uh, pre-production to production, what we learned and where we are right now. I hope you enjoy the video and have fun. I have been in Kiwi for two years and it was a great ride. Uh, and I hope it's going to be further down the road. Last year, I have been speaking about uh, why we approached Stila, how we did the testing, how we run the POC, and where we aimed. This year, I'll walk you through how we actually went to the production, a bit of the history as well, so, to have, so you have a big picture. And I don't know what I'm gonna speak next year, maybe some crazy story about us getting rid of Zilla or something like that, but <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know what universe it, uh, it would be to happen that way. So Kiwi.com, we are making travel better. How we do that? We are making travel better by building, virtu becoming virtual uh, global super carrier. What does it mean? We actually connect what is not connected, and that's pretty much it. We are uh, on the market for seven years already, and this year we have partnered with General Atlantic to further support our growth. So how does it actually work? You have like three major airline alliances in the world, and those combine 60 airlines. Then you have a lot of low-cost carriers. You have trains, you have buses, taxis. And all those combine on the flight side together to 180,000 to 200,000 flights per day. And this gives you a sneak peek of the portion of data that we are processing and what we are aiming. So still a DB at Kivicom. But let me first pause here for a second. Uh, last year, I ended up my talk saying like, if you are looking to migrate from Cassandra to Stila DB, I don't know what you are waiting for. And actually, I'm gonna ask a question. How many of you migrated this year to Stila DB? Raise your hands, please. I don't see your hands because of the lights, but Greg, <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? Yeah, I'm seeing about uh, maybe 15, 20 hands out there. Uh, we have some people giving out, giving out prizes. There are prizes involved. Keep your hands up, special, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Special Silla hats for those of you who in the last year made the switch over. We're making it from the back to the front. We love giving stuff out. There's still one there in the middle, Bob. Over in the corner. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Greg. Make an applause for yourself, guys. This is great. So how we use Stila in Kiwi.com? So we store their raw data. We put their flights, we put their buses, we put their trains, and everything is stored there. And our data set, it's a bit crazy, okay? It exchanges 60% of the data within a day, 80% data within three days, and 100% of the data every 10 days. And we don't expect the numbers growing, but getting, slow, getting even smaller, right? Because we are flying more, we are traveling more, and everybody wants to do that. For our topology, we choose two partners, and there was a lot of infrastructure changes, and not just the replacement from Cassandra to SteelADB. We migrated our APIs to uh, GCP. We partner with OVH, that is running our bare metal, and of course, with Stella Enterprise. We have a dedicated line between GCP and OVH, and this is something that allows us lower latencies and making sure that all the traffic is gonna safely arrive to the bare metal 
and it's got a serve. On the Scylla deployment, there is a bit important point to notice. We are running only one replica within each data center, but we have those data centers within close enough proximity within three different cities in Europe that still is low on latencies in between each other. So actually, a bit of history now, how we actually went there and what we did. So we contacted Stila team in 2016. It was really early, uh, early stage. And we have decided to go with Cassandra. In November, I don't know why always November, Stila Summit November, upgrades November, and everything November. Uh, in November 2017, we launched the Cassandra cluster. But even before launching it, we already had to do some tweaks uh, on top of it. One of them was that we were actually reading the SS tables directly from the disks, bypassing the Cassandra for our full table scans, because it was not able to keep up. Then, for the POC, we choose different variety of, of servers, different variety of configuration, and we as well test it on Google Cloud. I don't think that there is anybody that, that, that did that much testing on the GCP. We did that together with the Stila team and Google team. So if you are looking for your deployment on the GCP, definitely stop by to Stila guys or grab me around. And let's have a talk on that. As I mentioned already, we redesigned the infrastructure because before that, when we were running on Cassandra, we didn't have the dedicated line. But this time we did. And the, the use case that we have is actually massive reads, massive writes, and a lot of full table scans. So it's everything combined. And you don't have a table with the checkboxes like every Every one is checked in. So again, November last year summit, and we deployed our miss, last uh, missing servers, and we started mirroring traffic, uh, the right traffic only, to the cluster during the summit. And I wanted to do some live demo, but yeah, guys forbid me for doing that. And if you mention live demo to Glauber, uh, he's just going to walk away. <laughs> uh, but we didn't stop there, as I mentioned already. And what we did, we rewrote some of the applications talking directly to StillaDB cluster from Python to Go. And I invite you to Martin's talk. You're going to learn some great numbers, and you can use some of the open source that we created along the way. And we made Glauber really happy. <laughs> because this really allowed us to do some more optimization on the way that we were not able to do while using Python. So what is actual sizing of our, our cluster? Uh, so the, the first estimation was to end up with, with 21 servers. Actual size right now is 36. Total footprint is 100 terabyte of space. Uh, the, the data set was around 30 terabytes of space, but we had to keep, uh, keep some space for growth. And if you compare that to Cassandra replication factor three, so it, it's an impressive numbers, right? But that, that was not it. We had to run Cassandra cluster on replication four because it was not able to keep up. We were not, uh, we were not adding additional servers to the Cassandra um, after that. We had those SS table reads directly from the disks. And on top of that, we had to throw a massive amount of Redis uh, servers before, uh, before the Cassandra cluster. So how actually the migration looked like and how we, how, we, how we went there? So once again, dedicated connected line, three data centers, one copy of data in each, and on bare metal. And now the numbers. So we are doing around 400,000 reads per second. 
600,000 bytes per second, and we are not running any repairs. Why is that? It's because of the data set that is so crazy and it changed itself so fast, and there is no point of running uh, repairs because they will not finish, and we already exchanged all the data. So how it looks in, from the applic application perspective. So we have that gopher talking to Stila <coughs> and serving the traffic between GCP API endpoints and Stila. Here we have our inserts, and that's all the updates, all the new, new routes and everything that is going in there. And then we have another application that is doing full table scans. And we have two types of full table scans. One is reading constantly 90 million of rows, and the second one just reads the whole data set. And this has some downsides. So we went live, and give me a second, I'm gonna go one more slide back. I forgot to mention something, like this allowed this speed of exchange of the data allowed us to just do a simple migration. We just wrote data parallelly to Cassandra and SciladDB, and then gradually uh, increased the number of reads that were, were going to SciladDB, and we were cutting them down from the Cassandra cluster. And that migration was pretty easy because we spent like one month already mirroring the data, and for us, the switch was like continually partner by partner switching them uh, to Scylla. So how it looked like, like when we actually went live. So it seems, everything seems okay, but it had some uh, downsides, okay? So that topology that we de deployed is causing some minor issues. So for example, for example if you have consistency level one or local one. That means you either going to read from the gophers that are sitting in front of each of the Scylla nodes, like every, every location has its own gopher application, and they are reading from first from the local Scylla. That would be the local one if you would use it. But if something would fail, then it would not have a backup because that data center does have only one replica. So we have to use one instead of the consistency level. And what it causes to our applications is exactly this. So what you see on the chart, it's, it's not that big numbers. Like consistent, we had like milliseconds reads five, and then it just rebalances. It, it creates like, hey, I'm gonna read from this and there. And why is this happening? It is happening because of cache misses. Because we have those full table scans and we were running uh, 2018 Stila at that point, there was no uh, bypass cache. So always we ended up with cache misses. So the cache was invalid, it had to refill, and over time we had to clear the cache in like two weeks or something like that. So I have a question for you. How Many times it happened to you that you got upgraded from economic class to business class. Once. Yeah, once, <laughs> two. Okay, I see two hands. Greg, you lucky one. Yeah. <laughs> or you fly too much. Yeah. So uh, this is not what you should do to your databases, right? You should update them always. And if you are not doing that, then there is something wrong with you guys. So. We wanted to upgrade to 2019.1. Uh, At that point, we were running a version of 2018.1.11-2.kiv. <laughs> yes, that's .kiv. Thank you, Glover. Uh, and we were really looking into what bypass cache is going to do to our workload, what workload prioritization is going to do to that, and what the new version of SS tables called MC is gonna do it to, to, to that. So where we were planning to 
puts those features, right? So definitely, like worker prioritization, you have to set it up to the whole thing, but this guy here wants to have priority talking to Scylla. <laughs> Bypass cache for all the full table scans. So we avoid anything like screwing up our cache and we can serve the data without, without any problems. And, uh, and for sure, we need to balance it and have the workload prioritization on the ESRT as well. So this chart shows you about the bypass cache. So this is how it looked like on the cache misses on the regular, um, regular time. And this is when the upgrade to bypass cache started to be used. So you see significant drop of the cache misses and, and further improvements uh, on that. So workload prioritization, sorry Glauber, we are not using it yet. And that's because we don't need to. Because when we started using the bypass cache, we saw significant improvements on all the, all, all the areas because we just use it co correctly this time. <coughs> So it seems for us right now that we have a slightly oversi oversized cluster because while doing the full, ta full table scans and using the bypass cache on some workloads, on the smaller one, on the 90 million uh, rows reads, it's dropped from 200 uh, 520 seconds to 330 seconds. So this allows the cluster to breathe and just like do the responses as he's supposed to do. What the MC did to us. So our cluster is now utilizing one fifth of the disk space. Yeah, well, if you count the size tired competition strategy, then it's half of that, but I'm looking forward for the new release. Uh, and, and it went down by 30%. And when we were planning to do the upgrade, so we just like ping Scylla guys, arrange a date, um, throw up some wine, put some candles, you know, it's a date, so you have to. And how many of you actually like are using cloud? No hands, oh yeah, finally. How, of, how many of you are using enterprise support on the cloud? Mm -hmm. So you don't know even how much it costs, but you should use enterprise support with Stila, because Stila is just not an email address on a Zendesk. They are extension of your team, and do, they do exactly what you see there. So they talk, they discuss, they amuse you, and they make jokes. <laughs> So fast forward, one hour 56 minutes later, the whole cluster was upgraded. It was 32 nodes without any hiccup, and all, well, all went well. It doesn't stop there. Seven hours during eating breakfast, doing a deployment, and start, starting using bypass cache, just like that. And that's where we saw really the decrease. We saw, inc uh, we saw uh, decrease in the latencies and inserted. We are planning to use workload prioritization as well, but it needs to be properly tested and deployed. And that's what you should always do. And I want to thank to the whole Scylla team for the boring database. <laughs> there is no excitement in it. And I hope that you will keep up the great work. Thank you very much.